Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 42. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at our ledge a little bit more so if we fall off it we will respawn uh, by the ledge and possibly at the beginning of the dungeon, just depends what we uh, want to experience. We'll deal with tags and we'll also bring our sword into this scene as well, ready for when we have a battle in our little arena over here. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click on that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So between the last tutorial and this one, all I've done is add just a couple more of these walls here so it looks like there is something at least below. So we're kind of going to fall down here and rather than fall into the void forever, we're going to have a catchment which is going to teleport us or rather respawn us somewhere here. It's actually real simple to do and as I explained earlier um, there is a way of respawning perhaps at the beginning of the level so we're, oh, I'd like to explore both of these uh, but we'll probably do one this tutorial and one in the next tutorial as well because next tutorial is going to be a lot of fun. So for now all we need to do is create a trigger down here to catch us when we fall. So to do that we go to game object, 3D object and cube. And this cube is going to act as that trigger. So let's bring it up into position. And you need to basically have it high enough, but not too high, to act as a catchment. So let's stretch it all the way across and stretch it lengthwise. And it doesn't matter too much how big it is or if it intersects other objects. Just make sure it's low enough that you actually seem to fall. In this case, that looks about right. So we'd fall, we'd fall off the ledge and then we'd respawn. So let's untick Mesh Renderer and then let's tick Is Trigger. Now, it is colliding with other objects, so we're going to use tags to make sure that only the player can trigger this. So right click, create C Sharp script, and we'll call this Ledge Respawn. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Hopefully it won't take too long. Visual Studio can be a bit slow sometimes, which is not exactly great. So we can get rid of void star and void update because we don't need them. The only variable we're actually going to need is the player. So let's add that in. Public game object the player semicolon. So as I said earlier, it's going to act as a trigger that will catch us when we fall. So the method we're going to be using is void on trigger enter. And it doesn't need to be private, however we do need these in the parentheses because much like how we've done uh, tags previously, we need to reference this. And this word other can be anything you want. It's just a way of declaring another variable and by default it is other. So let's say if and in brackets, other dot tag equals, that's double equals, remember. And I believe the tag is player, but we'll check that. Open curly bracket. So let's head back to Unity and let's go to the first person controller. Yes, it is tag. So whatever your tag here, remember you do need to quote that in the script. Just remember your tag name. So let's head back here. So if it's not player then it does absolutely nothing only if it's player it will do something and what we need to do is take our player back to the beginning of the ledge section at least in this instance so somewhere here so i'm going to place a temporary marker to get the coordinates of where i want our player to respawn so game object 3d object and it can be anything i'm just going to use a cube i love my cubes so i'm going to bring it over here and I think the respawn should be probably somewhere around here, maybe. So let's round these figures just so we have proper integers. Let's have 59, that looks okay, minus 10, and 54. So they are going to be the coordinates we need to place in our script now. 59, minus 10, and 54. So we'll say, if the tag is player, then the player itself dot transform dot position equals new vector three because now we get to quote that coordinate so it was 59 
minus 10 and 54. Semicolon and save that script. So what's going to happen here is as soon as we enter that trigger, it's going to take us back to where we should be. So I can now get rid of that cube because that was only a temporary marker. And let's rename the original cube, which is the catchment area, as ledge catchment. Let's attach the ledge respawn script onto it. And then the player as the variable. And I'm going to save my scene and try this out. And fingers crossed we shouldn't have any problems. I probably should have moved our player to this section first, maybe cut out a little bit of the uh, playthrough of the dungeon. But I guess it doesn't really matter because we can test it at the same time, just make sure that nothing else goes drastically wrong. Because sometimes when you are testing, things can go wrong. So, here we go. It is this switch. And uh, we carry on running, go down trap door. There we go. So now, let's try going across our ledge. As soon as it gets here. It needs to be a bit brighter in here. So, ledge still works, but let's fall off. There we go, we've respawned. Let's try that again. And fall, there we go, respawn. One more time. There. So obviously you can work with that a little bit more. Uh, I do think it needs to be brighter in here. We'll probably brighten this up next tutorial. Um, yes, so obviously work down here, make it look as though you're not falling into oblivion. Place this where it needs to be. If you've got a larger section for your uh, ledge, then obviously adapt to that size. So let's bring in the sword from our previous scene because we're going to kind of need everything working correctly. Uh, so on the FPS controller, on first person character, we do have that elven sword right there. So if we tick it, let's just make sure it does still work. Shouldn't really have a problem. Okay, so... Hmm. Sound isn't playing, is it? It isn't playing. Uh, okay, that's confused me a little bit. I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, let's go to our first area. Make sure we save that scene. I'm not quite sure why the sound isn't playing there. We might have to have a little debug session. I think a debug session might actually help our development quite well here. Okay, so yeah, because we need to fix that error. I've noticed that error for quite a while now. We need to fix that one. You'll find yourself doing this quite a lot uh, in development, trying to sort out uh, all this kind of annoyance of, you know, bugs. Uh, audio objects, uh, sword swing. And it is in like so. I do believe this inflict damage object is the one we should be using. Um, and it's not doing it now, look. It stopped. Okay, so yeah, we're going to sort of solve that bug. Either way, we know the sword still works. We'll solve that bug uh, in the next tutorial. So next one's going to be quite a long one, I think. Let's head back to area two. And I'm not going to save that scene because I know it's all right as it is. So, uh, next thing I want to think about is if we fall off, do we want to fade out or anything like that? Um, do we? I think we've got fade screens already, haven't we, in the canvas. So let's go to our canvas, wherever it may be. I, I think we need to sort out the... Uh, hierarchy as well. So we do have fade in, which obviously is that one. So what I think we'll do is we'll fall and then I'll get it to fade in. So let's go to our script again and let's add that as a variable. So public game object fade in semicolon. And then we'll say, in fact, do we turn the fade in off at any point? I think we do, don't we? 
Let's quickly check. No, it stays on. Okay, that's not to worry. That is not to worry at all. So what we'll do is just play. So fade in dot get component open spiky bracket and is it animation or animator? I can't remember which one we've used. It's animation. Okay, fair enough. It's the older version. Uh, dot play and in brackets and quotes it's gonna be fade screen in. Fade screen in. Semicolon and save and then we've got to attach that to the ledge catchment script just there so let's drag and draw onto there and let's press play and quickly try this out so i'm going to end this tutorial by uh, basically just building up the little arena area that we're going to face so let's see do we there we go. Perfect. Let's try that one more time. Respawn. Excellent. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, so while I build up this next uh, little section here ready for the next tutorial, I will briefly explain what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So we've come across a couple of bugs, and I think we might have to fix a couple of those bugs. Whether it will be next tutorial or tutorial after, we're definitely going to have to fix them because they're glaringly obvious. Um, we're going to basically bring in an enemy next tutorial and get them to fight in this arena that we're building up right now. Uh, I think we're also going to quickly review that respawn and if we want to respawn at the beginning of the dungeon we'll find out how we can do that as well because you know not all the time you fall off and you want to respawn straight away you want to be able to have to start all over again just to add a little bit of difficulty in the game itself. So all I say all I'm doing now is quickly just building this arena section ready for next tutorial. So guys all I would advise you to do is work with your uh, platforms. You can have multiple platforms if you want to that is entirely up to you. Um, yeah build up your arena ready for next tutorial because I'll probably have built up this a little bit more before we start the next tutorial. And yeah, I will see you in that next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, guys.